Hey everybody, welcome back. Today is new project day. This one I'm really excited about. It's an attachment for a cordless drill so that I can put it on the flywheel nut on my go-kart and crank the motor over and start it. I've got a shifter cart. Um, you probably see it in the background of some of my videos. It's a CR125 Honda. Um, bought it used. It's not properly tuned. Um, I'm still learning on um, how to work on these things. It's my first two stroke. Um, you know, first two stroke, first motorcycle engine, first go kart, um, all that good stuff. So I don't really know what I'm doing with it. And honestly, I haven't even worked on a carburetor for years. So it's kind of this chicken and this egg thing because the cart has to run to. Uh, get tuned, but it also needs to be in somewhat decent tune to start properly. So I'm cranking on the back wheel with the engine and gear typically to try and start it, and it kind of stinks. So I've seen these um, videos on YouTube already, this isn't anything new, that people will take a one-way bearing, also known as a sprague clutch, and build that into kind of a socket or um, some type of an attachment for a, uh, just a cordless drill and then they can run that to the nut on their flywheel and crank the motor over and then once the, the motor cranks over that one-way um, bearing in there allows the the um the socket or whatever the attachment is to to overrun and that way it doesn't rip the drill out of your hands so i want to try and make one of those um, i've only seen them for sale for, from one place and they're about 150 dollars. so i think i can do a little bit better than that so I thought the easiest way to do this would just be to show you the CAD. Um, so I've got it pulled up here. Um, this is the overall assembly. And then we can kind of hide some things and we'll just kind of go through it all. So, so this, I'm just calling it the drill side. Um, this will be a half inch uh, shank right here. And that way, you know, just shank it up to your drill. This is about two inches in diameter here. And so this is basically just one big bearing housing. One thing that's kind of weird here is that the bearing is either going to be a press fit. You can get two types, press fit or one with a keyed um, outer and inner race. So I'm electing to go with a key. That way I can guarantee that this thing's not going to turn in here. And uh, I'm planning on milling this on the Tormach and interpolating that hole. So I don't think I'll have press fit tolerances. So I figured instead of, since I don't have a shaper, to do a keyway on the inside here and then put a key in there, then I'd actually just like machine the key into it. And the specs I'm getting say it's only like a two millimeter wide key, so that seems pretty small on here. But I figured I'd go with the spec, draw it in there, and then I use, this is an eighth inch diameter drill to um, clear out the area here. If you were to just, you know, add this piece sticking out here, you'd have a radius right here and the bearing wouldn't fit. So this was my way of, of getting around that. So it's pretty simple. It's just gonna be solid steel. Um, I'll just buy two inch round bar and um, stand it up like that, mill around it, get my half inch shank, and then um, flip it over, mill out this pocket, and then come in with like an eighth inch end mill and clear that out around the keyway there. So, and it's an inch deep. The um, bearings are half an inch each. So, and I've got two of them. And that kind of worked out well because that way um, I could account for a little bit of that, you know, being out of alignment or, or I guess misalignment if you're not perfectly in line with the crankshaft when you're, when you're trying to fire it. Um, it just kind of gives it a little bit more rigidity that, in that direction. Um, the other reason was that these bearings by themselves, or they're not really bearings, they're the clutches, but by themselves wouldn't hold enough torque, I don't think. Having two, I think they will um, share the load and it should all work out. So plop those two bearings in there and then I will put, it's not drawn in here, but I'll put a snap ring to hold everything in there and it should work there. So then if we shut off the, I'm calling it the drill side, we can look at the nut side. So that's the part that's gonna go into the bearing. 
and my flywheel is a 17 millimeter bolt. I drew that in there and that's exactly like 17 millimeters from here to here. So I know I'm gonna have to fix that. This is kind of a crude drawing right now. But yeah, just kind of mill that in. And then this will be, I think one inch stock should work. And this is a little bit under one inch. I measured just a normal 17 millimeter socket. I think this came out to like 0.92 inches. So I'm good there. I'll, it'll probably end up just being whatever the stock is. I don't think I'll machine that. And then I just turn this down. This inner here is 17 millimeters. I know I'm talking in American and metric at the same time, but it's been interesting because um, these are metric bearings. And so, yeah, the, I've got to use two, two units. It's always fun. But anyway, yeah, I just got the you know, this shaft goes through the bearings and then I'll put a snap ring on the back here just to make sure that they're held in. And I know it's not shown on these bearings in particular, but there'll be a keyway running through both of those that will key the shaft to the, to the bearings or clutches. I guess they're really clutches. So it's pretty simple. Um, that's kind of the idea of it. And I think it'll all work out. I've gone through it's kind of almost embarrassing. You, this is a pretty simple part, but this is actually, you can see up here, version three. Um, I started out with a different version. Yeah, right there, that was um, using a different style of bearing that was press fit, and I didn't like that. So I then went with, you know, the bearings that I've got now, but yeah, I just kind of played around with it for a while. Uh, it's amazing how, how into the weeds you can get when you start designing this kind of stuff. But I think it'll work. If you've got any comments of something I could do better or change on this design, um, I know there's plenty of you that are watching this that have a lot more experience than me, um, especially making stuff like this. Um, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. I actually haven't ordered the material or the um, clutches yet. So it's not too late if you've got, you know, good input that might change the direction of this and make it more successful please let me know so that is it for this week sorry there's not more substance but i've been really just sitting at a computer playing with cad and then you know you get part way through designing something you think is going to work and then you look at it for five minutes and go no nah, it's not going to work and then you start googling to try and figure out how it's supposed to work and you know those rabbit holes when you're designing stuff so this is mostly what I've been doing this week, aside from, you know, of course, spending time with the family and everything. So also it's been freaking cold. It's like the coldest week of the year. So I haven't really been feeling really motivated to go hang out in the shop, even with my heater going. Um, it's still chilly out there. So uh, I thought it was a good week to just nail down a design. Um, that way I could, you know, get everything ordered and just, you know, hit the ground running with everything I need. Um, just have it all ready to go. So. So that is it for this week. I will see you next time.